In our last segment, we learned about the roofing process, along with some helpful tips before hiring a professional. Now let's once again catch up with Andy Lindis from Lindis Construction to learn about the underlayments, flashings, and shingles that make up a 50-year roof system. Well, Andy, these guys are sure making short work of this process. Now, you told me they started this job earlier today, and they're, what, about four hours into it, and they're already this far? Yeah, very efficient, removing a cedar shake roof this size and having it almost completely done with the underlayment. And that's huge. If I'm a homeowner, I want my roof under cover as quickly as possible. Just think of all the recent storms we've had. The last thing I want is it to be open and having rain coming into my attic. Yeah, the last thing we want to see is water leaking in the house and one day installation really eliminates that chance. And you mentioned to me when we were walking around, it's about a 20 year old home. Cedar shakes, this looks a lot older. This is one of the shakes that came off than just 20 years old. Yeah, what a lot of people don't understand about cedar shakes, they think, oh, 50 year roof I'm gonna put in my house. Well, there's certain maintenance that should happen to these roofs on a yearly basis. If you get any kind of a fungus buildup, or you have a lot of shade or a lot of water that sits on them, that really does start to deteriorate in the faster than it should. You know, this house is only 20 years old. This is the original roof, and it really was showing signs that it needed to be changed. Chunks of shingles were coming off. I mean, sure. you can feel how, how brittle, brittle this it is. is. Sure. It's just time to make a change. Well, what I like to hear about that story is these homeowners, obviously, were listening to their home, talking to them. Mm -hmm. They went out, they noticed that it needed to be done before it started leaking, and then they called in the professionals to get it done right. So in this segment, really what I want to focus on is the different components that make up a roofing system because it's more than just simply replacing the shingles. There's a lot that goes into it and every homeowner I get a chance to meet with, I try to build the roof in front of them. You know, start with the, the actual, all the shingles removed down to the actual decking and let's show you how we build it to the final shingle. First thing is our underlayment. The Tiger Paw underlayment, it's a lot different than that 15 or 30 pound felt out there. And you've seen how that gets installed. Sure. And it goes on with a hammer tacker. Every time the hammer tacker hits that 15 pound felt or 30 pound felt, it tears it. It actually leaves an opening where you can see the roof decking. Uh, that's a chance to leak. Should the shingles leak, it gets to that spot, starts leaking in your attic and can cause a lot more damage. So the purpose of a felt, whether it's the 15 or 30 pound black felt that we see or this impressive Tiger Paw, it's in the unlikely event that you have a leak, that it's gonna protect the roof? Yeah, you know me, it's all about checks and balances. Should something happen to the actual shingles or should water get underneath the side of it, I wanna make sure that there's no chance for it to leak and this material here is gonna give me that best chance. And again, all these different products that make up a roof system, these are things that can not only separate the price in a bid, but it's something that the homeowner should be aware of and ask the pertinent questions. Little things like this, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it is to me. It's the color match W value. And a lot of guys are using galvanized steel and it's not near nearly as thick as this one. And I told you, nine feet wide with ice and water shield, That's we're right. taking those things. It's gonna be exposed, which is what I like for valleys. There's just too much water running down to really trust a shingle to last a long time there. But the color matching, so everything blends in nicely. So not only are you having longevity, not only are you gonna get the best value, but aesthetically, you're getting the best bang for your dollar. Really makes sense to me. And when you think of the valley, this looks pretty big, but you said it's exposed. Is it only gonna be exposed this, this center yeah, section? Yeah, three right? inches on each side. So not a lot of it's exposed, but for me, when I see that, it really is an eye store. You don't want something like this to stand out. Sure. So again, talk to your professional, expect your roofing professional to show you the different products that are going into the roof. Yeah, and not all products are created the same. Ice and Water Shield is a perfect example. Now this is the weather. Weather watch. What I like about the weather watch is actually adhesive is heat activated. We actually have a chance to adjust that. It actually takes the sun and some heat in order for this adhesive to really activate so we can make sure that wherever we're putting it, it's where we wanted it, it's going to be flat, and it's going to make sure that it's protected. It seems like it's very forgiving to the installers, yet very effective for the end user. A lot of things like that. The ice and water shield, our coil nails, we look for things that we can use that are not only going to be effective for the installation, but it's going to give us the efficiency. And we went through four different manufacturers trying to pick out the proper nail because they weren't going through the gun properly. They're using half a roll. If you're using half a roll, that's gonna be more material cost to the homeowner and it's gonna take longer to install. And when you, this something is important, this is the part that's gonna hold the shingle on. This isn't a spot you wanna cut corners. You know, as simple as it sounds to me as the layperson, Coil nails. I mean, I didn't know there was that big a difference. I thought nails were nails were nails. Four different manufacturers before we settled on one that works almost perfectly all the time. 
Another thing is, a lot of guys are just buying galvanized pipe stacks, galvanized brown vents, and spray painting them on the job site. Sure. Now this is a baked on finish that's gonna last an awful long time. Now, spray paint, yeah, it looks nice right away, but maybe two, three years. Yeah. Again, this is something that's gonna see on your roof. Wouldn't you want it to match the roof for 50 years? And not only aesthetically, these look like they're very durable products, well thought out, less chance of any leakage around the penetration. Yeah, this is one of those detail spots that if you try to cut corners, you're gonna end up with leaks, end up with problems, and with a 50 year non paraded warranty, the last thing I want is some kind of problem. You pointed down here to the roof fence. I've seen where those actually get reused sometimes. Yes, I know. People reuse everything on the roof anywhere they can to cut materials. That's why I always tell people, try to compare apples to apples. We line item by line item by line item everything that we do on the roof so a homeowner knows what they're getting. There are no hidden expenses. This is what our bid is. They're gonna know exactly what they're getting. And when we do it, we go down to the bare roof deck and build the roof up from there. Nothing gets reused. Okay, Andy, now we're getting to the, the part that everybody's familiar with, the shingles themselves. Ultimately, that's what's gonna be the aesthetic aspect of the house. This is where people really spend a lot of their time. This is what's gonna be the end result. When you stand from the seat, look at it, this is gonna be what people see. And as you can see, lots of different choices from GAF. This is just a few. There's a handful of other ones people can choose. But, you know, I've talked to you about this before. You know how hard it is to try to visualize what this is gonna look like on your house. I mean, I take a look at it, yeah, it looks nice, but I sure wish I could have a picture of the end result before I start. When they first started coming out with all these different styles of shingles, it was really hard for me to visualize. So we asked and we received a computer software from the manufacturer where we can take a picture of their home and show them the end result on any shingle they want any color they want before we start the job. Are you serious? So if I'm a homeowner, you can take pictures of my house and then overlay any of these choices. And there are a lot of different choices out there so that I have the ultimate and peace of mind that I'm making the right decision before you even start? Yeah, before you even start. And we actually have a virtual remodeler right on our website where you can pick different styles of homes and get an idea before we even come out and visit you. Wow. So it's an excellent tool to use to visualize the end result. Okay, these homeowners had 20 year old shakes. Mm -hmm. What did they ultimately choose? They ultimately chose the Grand Sequoia Shingle. Now, this is a shingle that was designed to mimic the look of a cedar shake. It's got that depth, it's got those shadow lines. It really does look like a shake roof. And anytime we do a roof such as this, we actually laid the shingles out and we did a little in-house training. Every single job that we do, we do that because they do lay a little bit different. So just to make sure everybody's on the same page, we lay it out on the driveway or a flat fleece. We make sure all the guys know how it's supposed to go on. Even if they've done it before, we just want to make sure. Stick around. We'll continue with our roofing projects next, here on today's Home Remodeler.